Now we'll have a small round table. This afternoon we have been speaking about environmental health, using natural uh, and artificial radiation, on natural radiation. Uh, Jose Miguel Rodriguez could perhaps uh, help us a little bit. But the one who has been speaking had to leave. Unfortunately, uh, for a personal reason, so uh, natural radiations, if you have questions, we will try to answer the questions as well. So the speakers left. Maria Jose speak about uh, Raiden. It's been very interesting. And then Alfredo has just been speaking about Wi-Fi at school, uh, which is a very interesting topic as well. So let's start now if you have some questions. A ver si alguien rompe el hielo. Who would like to start, please? Luego la salida vamos a hacer. We'll have to pass a test when we're finished. So careful. It's a time to ask. I mean, uh, otherwise you would just uh, not pass the exam. Sí. Uh, this is for <coughs> any of the panel, but uh, how are you going to keep the uh, uh, Wi-Fi out of uh, neighborhoods where people uh, get zapped right on the end of the uh, street, <coughs> where they get their Wi-Fi comes in their house even though they don't want it? Yes. Well, the end. Wi-Fi para que 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 haya cobertura en las escuelas o en las casas, etcétera. Going to be maintained as to schools, particularly. In fact, in Spain, we don't know what's going to happen because, as we've said, it's uh, really it's the, there is a program called the School Dot Zero, which is supposed to offer computers to a lot of students. Because of the lack of funding, this has uh, been eliminated. Now they are speaking about Aula Stick 2012. We don't know what it means really yet. And we don't know what will happen uh, with the uh, deployment of antennas being or installed already. We really don't know what's going to happen. Now, based on some comments which I've heard um, from some colleagues, they told me that these antenna very often are also used for mobile telephony. So though you can withdraw the uh, PC at school, they will still have their own function. But in fact, I really don't know what's going to happen as to uh, Wi-Fi, particularly in the school. Well, yes, I know what's going to happen. I know that it is an objective from the uh, Silver uh, Group and we will go on fighting. Uh, meanwhile, we don't achieve that result. So this is our objective, and we will get it. We will re re really uh, reach that objective, I'm for sure, and we're going to fight. Uh, Carmen, I think at Cap Reef, I'm a physician from Barcelona. I started with work with the Parents Association, and uh, uh, the information has been distributed uh, uh, to all parents at school. And uh, I know that uh, they will ask for more information. Uh, and in Catalonia, there is a school uh, with a sp special catering system as well, which is a really defending the values of ecology, etc. All the material being used is uh, uh, emission free, and they are trying to change Wi-Fi um, uh, to substitute it uh, for the cable. So there is a movement from the parents' uh, level, but not from the top. So it's just a conclusion which a lot of people have reached. I mean, social action is necessary to induce change because, because the person being responsible with don't, won't do anything. It does represent what you said. I mean, uh, and uh, the professionals, health professionals, 
well, qualified to give an information which could be accepted as a true information, it is important for you to uh, have a real commitment. I mean, uh, so you really feel committed with it, looking for the uh, health of your patients. And within that commitment, I mean, you will really need to tell them about these new risks. And we will be there to support you. Yeah, some individuals and institutions uh, which are filling up that kind of gap which exists. But the participation necessary, your intervention and the person getting your message uh, should also uh, need to participate. And that's something which is obvious. The environmental uh, uh, toxic products uh, uh, have an impact on us and on our next generations. I mean, it is a prejudice for everybody. So we have to use common sense, the sooner the better. It's something possible. I mean, each of us in our own field, we have to do whatever we can. And all together, we'll be able to get that change done. I would like to add something to what Catalina just said now on um, non-ionizing uh, uh, radiations, antenna, etc. Yeah, some experts have been uh, uh, consulted, and uh, there is an institution which can measure the radiations uh, on the roof of your home, etc. Uh, if you ask for it, what do they do? They uh, use uh, they install a device during some time, and the way they measure, I think it's six minutes, I think six minutes and they measure, they get the average value. And apparently, I'm not an expert, but uh, apparently what is uh, causing a damage is the peak value, not the average value. So at the end of the measurement period, it's something really legal within the limits being uh, allowed because if the limits are 450, micro uh, watts per square centimeter, or perhaps they get 10, 15, or 20, but not 450, which is not recommended, but it's within the legal uh, framework. So we reach the conclusion that what we have to do is to drop these legal limits. But uh, in Spain, not only in Spain, but in other countries, there are just a few countries having much lower limits compared with ours, which have 1,000 less. But they use the telephone. Does mean they are not using telephone, but they use it. But it, this system is more expensive than the one we use with a powerful antenna, which damages uh, a lot of people. Now, the last uh, session which we had in our Congress in the Ramon y Cajal Hospital, well, as a, just as an anecdote, one of the participants, who is a member of Spanish University, a well-known university, stated that uh, as just as uh, we could say that when uh, uh, wood is being burned after I don't know how many years we cannot build anything, why when, uh, um, he said, when a head of state or minister or president is no longer president, why in the following years he would be an advisor of a telephone company or on a, a utilities, uh, etc., or an investment company. We should do something similar, too. As, uh, well, anyway, it's a question I really ask myself. Well, I will say something else. Speaking about the limits, look at that uh, uh, really uh, graph. You can see the per square centimeters in red. You can see when they are an effect on humans. At the bottom, the red uh, uh, spot speak about L uh, the ECG. So you can measure alterations within the normal physiology. And from then, that level onward, in uh, light blue, you have different uh, expositions. And in a darker blue color, you have the standards per country. 
you can see that there are very restrictive legislation, such as in uh, uh, Salzburg, China, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, Jose Miguel knows it as well. We would be much above that. But what is really interesting to see the differences from when we can measure this small disorder in the ECG. The second red line speaks about uh, sleep, uh, uh, <laughs> really uh, uh, trouble, etc. And from them onward up to regulations, with the exception of Southern Carolina. I mean, you can see the different impacts. Jean uh, Monroe, I just wanted to say that it's possible to do a biological test in the laboratory for electrical sensitivity because the, the test I showed, for, for those who were here, the test I showed of lymph lymphocyte sensitivity uh, with sulfite where you can get the ingress of calcium into the cell when the cell is exposed to that which it's sensitive to can also be done for electrical fields. So if you put the patient's lymphocyte on the on a slide uh, and have a, a calcium probe there which shows blue when uh, when there is an electrical field in the vicinity all we need to do is to put the normal mains cable uh, alongside the slide and if the person is sensitive to electrical fields the calcium will just flow into the cell and you can see it so you can measure the degree of sensitivity as well so this is a, a very useful thing for those people who need to have uh, an, in, an observable diagnosis for electrical sensitivity. Thank you. It's difficult for me to... It's scientific. He's uh, translating the same question because he didn't have earphones, I'm afraid. Cuando se, ve, se, se, se cruza con un campo electromagnético, etcétera, y que había que hacer un test de la, de, la, de la fin de la población. No sé lo que opináis vosotros. Sí. Bueno, uno. Well, one of the problems which we have as electrosensitivity is a lack of unification as to the diagnostic criteria. So the only tests which have been made, they have determined that electrosensitivity is an invention from some people, not in order not to work and to be paid from institutions, etc. Meanwhile, we haven't got scientific agreement at the world level about the way we can detect and diagnose correctly the disease, and it is possible. We won't be able to know exactly. Yes, one of the interactions is with calcium, yes, but then at the cell level, an electromagnetic uh, radiation will interfere because in the cell membrane there are chromium and other heavy metals and when the person has got uh, multiple sensitivity uh, uh, problem, all these metals will react with electromagnetic uh, uh, radiation. It's just a lantina that will start vibrating. But we need a diagnostic criteria from the physicians. I'm not a physician. But, I mean, you should reach a consensus, really, uh, trying to ask uh, uh, WHO to classify it with the CA code, such as with, uh, they have done with the fibromyalgia. But this is what we need uh, to unify the uh, criteria, the assessment criteria. Now they've just done some tests, and they have demonstrated that the, uh, these studies, which are being paid by the industry, show that the uh, people will react against an antenna. Uh, which is uh, uh, not functioning. And when we speak about electrosensitivity, at least in Spain, we say, well, that's something they have been inventing. It's a liar. I mean, I mean, how are they going to, uh, you know, capture and Tina, et cetera? Well, it, it simply is that this is an objective method in cell biology. It's standard cell biology evaluations so that the this would make it um, possible to have a diagnostic criterion. I know you say that there are things in the cell wall, but like chromium and so on, but why does the chromium not let calcium in 
if there were no electric field, but if there is an electric field, then it does let it in. And it's, it varies according to the individual's degree of sensitivity. So it will be a very valuable diagnostic tool. I think it needs to be published because th that will be very helpful and probably if we could get it published, that would be um, a useful thing for all of society. Well, now it's trying. tema de, 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 de la, cuando se penetra, que por qué no se publica, porque la, la célula, el, la membrana in, impide, impide que se, que, que se que penetre ese, ese calcio dentro. Es que no, no, sé, no soy científico, no sé. Claro, cómo. bueno. ¿Y por bueno, qué no se es publica? Que, es, su, es su principal pregunta. Claro, el por qué no se publica yo no lo sé, me refiero, no, no solo... Es... No, well, there's not only that evidence about the channels in the cell membrane. This is a scientific evidence. Why is not that so published? I really don't know. I suspect that uh, if it were being published, we'll have a hundred more saying that it's not so. I mean, not long ago in a media, uh, in a press release, a public uh, media, uh, somebody said that radiation didn't cross the skin nor the cell nor anything. I mean, practically saying that we were a kind of uh, Iron Man. <laughs> in, in other program, he said he was sorry, he had made a mistake. But anyway, theoretically, he was, I mean, a journalist. Very difficult to know why things are not being published. Why don't we publish that the fact that we have discovered that with the electromagnetic radiation, we can stop the liver cancer? They don't know how, but they know that it stops. The growth stops. They know at the end the patient dies because they have 99% of mortality at five years. Why isn't that so published that radio frequency could stop liver cancer? Or radio frequency from Dr. Boris Patsek, for instance, with another frequency could also stop breast cancer. Or why don't we publish that we have discovered that to use a PC uh, on your legs will damage a sperm, etc. And we don't know why isn't that so published either. We know that it exists, but we don't know why this is not being published. And we don't know why a lot of physicians are against the fact of uh, hearing about these things. And the first thing they will say, there is no scientific evidence. I always answer the same thing. They are. Uh, uh, scientific evidence, not about the mechanism, but about the scientific evidence. This is obvious. Anybody reading the, uh, in a report will see uh, scientific evidence. And Ruth Met, you will read 10 studies, about 10 studies. You will have enough criteria, at least. But what you say, I really don't know why isn't that so published. Uh, a lot of tests could, could be made. There's another test which shows that there is an increase of metabolism of sugar in the brain when you are submitted to radiation. There are a lot of studies which have been made which shows an interaction. In fact, the EU is in the Intermediate Revision of Environment is asking for an establishment of a correct uh, electromagnetic compatibility mapping. There is not such a thing yet. I don't know whether the physicians know at which frequency each organ works. I don't know. I don't know whether this exists or not, because I know that it's known from the uh, bioelectrical uh, level. I don't know whether it's known, for instance, the liver. I don't know which level. But in a way, the EU is asking for it, because curiously enough, there are norms of uh, protection which are stricter for electronic devices more than for human beings. There is a map about electromagnetic compatibility which has to uh, be required and uh, respected among the different devices, but not the same thing which could say at which frequencies could have an impact on human beings, at which frequency our heart could da be damaged by an, uh, an uh, uh, in an external uh, electromagnetic field. 
So uh, there is an external frequency which uh, emits some uh, specific frequency. Yes, just a second to Dr. Munro. I would like to say something. We, I speak on my behalf, but I think we are not aware of the fact that there is an objective, repeatable uh, test for the diagnosis of electrosensitivity. But if you know it, we'll be delighted to know about these data because it's certainly a lack of knowledge from our part. It will be very useful for patients and professionals. Well, well, we've done this test, but we haven't published it yet. We've got about 150 patients whom we've studied, um, and we can show it very clearly. I think the reason why we haven't published it is because we need, it can't be, um, we've, we've got difficulty in publishing anything if it's just an audit. Um, we have to have done this in some blinded fashion, and to be able to do that, uh, we, we have to put it to an ethics committee, get an ethics committee to approve it, and then we have to be able to um, look at the results independently so that um, we can have a record of who had electrical sensitivity and showed this test to be positive and who hadn't and so on. So I think that we, we'd probably need a bit of resource to do that, but my view is that it's a very valuable test so far for our patients with electrical sensitivity. Sí, pero la gente doctor, les diré que ellos sí que han hecho una, un estudio de este tipo en 150 pacientes que no lo han publicado todavía, pero que, que en fin lo van a hacer porque no se ha hecho por lo visto a doble ciego los que lo tenéis sí, claro. y lo tienen que perfeccionar por lo visto el, 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 la fórmula que, que, que ellos han, han seguido. ¿Es that correcto? Ah, no, no, es que creí que sabía, estaban traduciendo, perdón. A ti sí que te lo han traducido. ¿Quién responde? La, la pregunta. So, my question is about the previous presentation by Mrs. Vizcaíno on Raiden. I, I think she said that uh, the on the top of the Rocky Mountains, there were high levels of radon. So if people with multiple sensitivity flee from cities and take refuge in the mountains, because it seems that the air there is healthier, then perhaps, you know, there would be a jumping from the pan into the fire. That's my question. Well, it's not really the mountains. It's it's the makeup. It has to do with the makeup of the mountains. In Madrid, for example, the Sierra is f made of granite, whereas in uh, Summer Sierra, there is no granite. And so in Summer Sierra, uh, the levels of radon are much lower. But this has something to do with multiple sensitivity. It's a second cause for lung cancer in the world, as shown by WHO, but it can be avoided with corrective measures in houses, with good insulation, for example. No pasa nada por vivir en so there's nothing wrong about living in the cities. If your home is well insulated, you know, you have no risks at all. And ra radon is Im immediately dissolved in air, and it is easily dissipated. And so if you walk in the mountains, there's no problem. The problem is if you have a house that is not properly insulated. But I don't think there's any risk for sensitivity. The problem is lung cancer. Good evening. Hello. I am Consuelo Perez, and I was a patient of Dr. Ria in 2001, uh, 11 years ago. And then I had chronic fatigue. Uh, chemical sensitivity, fibromyalgia, etc. Uh, in his clinic, uh, everything was measured, and I was sensitive to 50 hertz. My, and then my threshold was at 068, and I was given a, a little bottle with that frequency, and I had to drink 
placing that container in water, etc. And nowadays, I, after that treatment, uh, my sense, my sense, my electromagnetic sensitivity is much lower. But I was tested in a very special uh, place, so they do measure it, and each one of us has a specific frequency that is harmful to us. Not all of us are the same. Dr. Ria can perhaps confirm this. Thank you. Sí, bueno, es, es por lo que... Well, that's the reason why I was speaking about an electromagnetic compatibility map. But there is no electro human electromagnetic compatibility map. You went to a clinic and you were given a measurement for yourself, an individual measurement. Yes. The on, the on, uh, so I only know that uh, measurements in megahertz, uh, the only Morris bioresonance machine can measure these things, but not, I don't know of any other device. I know that medicine is based upon biochemistry, and medicine based upon bioelectromagnetism doesn't exist yet. I attended some quantum physics course in, uh, courses in Madrid with a professor from the university, Dr. Fonseca. She is a physicist specialized in quantum physics, and she's a cosmologist. And what she said is that the medicine of the future will be completely different from today's medicine. It will be more related with bioelectromagnetism and biochemistry because we interact, interact with things on a bioelectrical um, manner rather than a biochemical manner. If you g go into an electrical field, your body uh, does a lot of biochemical reactions, but that is still to be studied. Now, in terms of what you said about this Mora machine, I cannot use it because I have extremely strong reactions. So, well, because of my sensitivity, well, of course, every person is individual. You cannot use the same yardstick for everybody because each person reacts in a very individual way. And then there's the brain, the way people think. Uh, we know that uh, thinking can be very helpful. So really, we can say what uh, uh, um, the, the, the old philosopher used to say. I only know